Oh, it's complaining. It's not wanting to let me uh, record. Hopefully, I've got this set up properly on the <laughs> Twitch channel this time so that it actually saves the, uh, the thing. Uh, because for some reason, is there anything going on so far? Which might be using. Huh, that's the first time I've ever seen that error. Hmm. Alright, well, we're set up. Welcome, Always everybody. Fun. Yeah, it's this is the first time we've done it this way. So, right. um, there is that that people are going to want to see. It says Weave and Void is live. Let me tab over here so I can watch the chat. If people are tuning in, and I can mute that, and, yep, all right, let me plug my phone in, that way I can watch chat if anybody tunes in. All right, welcome everybody to November, whatever day this is, um, November 3rd. Um, where we're going to be doing the next stream. Um, when I tab over to here, do you still see this? Yep. You can still see Photoshop and everything. All right. So, but it killed it for the people watching the stream. So that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Hmm. Technical difficulties. I'm not sure how we will show this to the people streaming. It doesn't really matter. We could just talk about it and then I will send you the uh the marked version later on um because you could still see the mouse icon and everything else it's just if i tab over to this okay. tab so yep. um for those of you who are tuning in welcome to our technically challenged uh first brainstorming episode that we've done in like two months i think since we stopped doing them on my personal youtube channel um now that we've moved over to the weave in the void twitch channel and all the new stuff um, we are now uh, back to our Wednesday night sessions. So typically on Wednesday nights, um, we do brainstorming and or our weekly stand-ups, what we talk about, whatever work we did the previous week and what we're going to be working on in the week coming up. Um, oh, by the way, uh, for those who don't know, I'm Tim Anderson, a.k.a. Renfill, and I'm joined by my brother. Joey, a.k.a. Itradlor. And Christina is sometimes here, but she is across the country right now visiting family, so she is not here at the moment. And her work isn't important for what we're doing here tonight. So, um, yeah, that's this... right, Chris. Not important if you watch this later. <laughs> for those of you who have downloaded the recent demo for our point-and-click adventure game called An Adventurer's Tale, um, you got an 8K version of this map. This is the village of Marin's Rest, which is um, the starting village for uh, the adventure game. And we kind of took inspiration from, uh, I, uh, you know, King's Quest, Quest for Glory, etc. I think the number one source of inspiration for me when I was thinking about how I wanted to design the starting area, the starting village, was the first Quest for Glory game because right off the bat you're there in spielberg and you're just that's it your early adventuring hours are all spent directly in that town you know you're starting off you meet the sheriff and then you go into the tavern and then you can go into the magic shop and then there's the adventurers guild and the uh and then you go around the corner and there's the centaur with the you know the the apples and the fruit merchant and then there's the uh, sheriff's house and then there's the alley and then there's the tavern itself and below the tavern is the thieves guild so we've got a nice little compact area that had about 10 scenes or so in that first area and so we kind of wanted to replicate that style with our own game and so that's what we set out to design and develop when we were putting this together and i'm getting lots of pings on my phone let me double check what that is who knows what that is? Yeah, we went. We we even went so far as to go back and play Quest for Glory to really get a good feel for that. Yes. Um, Great game, by the way. Yeah, that was probably six months or so ago. I, I did. I didn't do a full playthrough of Quest for Glory, but I did like I don't know. I got like a 
I can't remember. I did like three or four hours, which was enough to do the starting town, go to the stables, go kill some goblins, go to Baba Yaga, um, go steal the thing from the kobold in the cave and rescue the kid who had been turned into a bear. And I mean, I did a whole bunch of stuff. So, I mean, I played probably a third of the game that, that playthrough. Um, hang on. These are day job messages. So I, I actually have to check those <laughs> even though we're here on this stream. Um, so, so what we're doing tonight, um, those of you who played the adventure game, um, this, this area right here, you can see my cursor, right? Joy. Okay, yes, perfect. Um, this area down in here is what you saw in the demo of the point-and-click adventure game. So you start off, you've got the Stony Brook Tavern, you've got the Fire and Flip Forge, you've got Penny's General Store, and the uh, Lauren Lexicon's <clears throat> uh, bookstore. And I apologize for my, <clears throat> my voice. My throat's been kind of crappy for like about four or five days now. Anyway, um, this is the starting area here, and if you noticed uh, in the demo, it, it, it's skewed slightly, but you'll actually see in the distance in the demo, you actually see this uh, windmill off in the distance. Um, it's it's a lot it's a, a lot further south in the game than it is here on the map, but this is not meant to be like an exact representation. This is a you know sort of more or less type of version. Um, but we've got this area here is what we started off with. And now we're going to be laying out tonight. The whole purpose of this episode is we're going to actually lay out the rest of this um, because we spent the last six months basically using this as the springboard, not just as you know the first scene, but using this as sort of the first scene where we where we also implemented all of the mechanics. So there was a lot more that went on in this scene than just building the scene, adding quests and NPCs and items. It was also how do we get doors to work? I don't. I mean, there's countless things you had to figure out. Um, getting doors working, getting the instancing properly, getting the quest system working more or less the way we wanted to, the dialogue all working the way we wanted to, getting items spawning and associated with quests. There was a lot of mechanics that went into building this this demo or this prototype. Now we're moving on because that was the hard part. Now the rest of this is just, I would consider to be time consuming. I don't think it's really difficult yeah. per se. I mean, um, the, the only thing that we that we might do that's like new would be I we definitely need a storage system of some kind so that uh, you're not limited to those six inventory you know, slots so that, so, so that you can store stuff which we would ideally have in his storage chest um, we, we we had that idea to do it for the demo but that got taken off the table just because it was hindering progress so I will be circling back to that at some point, hopefully, because <laughs> um, I, I, I that would but that, I think that's the only thing that would be new, or if we do any sort of specialty stuff. Uh, but as far as it should be copy and paste from here on out. I mean, just time consuming, like you said. So we have to talk tonight about. Um, is that your phone or my phone? My phone keeps beeping. That's not mine. Yeah. Hey, got to pay those bills. You better answer them. Oh, we had a video go live tonight and some other stuff. Um, it's just my phone is giving me all sorts of updates about all the things that are coming out on Facebook and YouTube right now. So uh, one of the things we got to figure out tonight is we need to figure out scenes and we need to figure out... Mm -hmm. I don't really think we need to worry too much tonight about what buildings we need to enter or not because like we've said before, it's a simple matter of... If it's an enterable building, we just we can stick the door on all of them, and it's just that if it's an enterable building, then we will then add the animation to it and make it an enterable door so that you can go into the interior of the scene. Um, I'm going to leave it up to you kind of how you want to do each one of these scenes. I was thinking about this earlier, though. We definitely need a scene with the sheriffs, and I was thinking, going back to Quest for Glory 1, the way that scene is laid out, you see the path um, kind of leading out of town, even though the the gate isn't in that shot. When you enter the zone, you're standing on the back side of that, and then the sheriff's is in front of you, and you can go left, 
In this case, you would be going left to this area, or you could go right, which would be going over here to this area. So we definitely need the sheriffs. Um, and I don't know whether, because you also said, correct me if I'm wrong, we're building this as one big zone, as I recall. And then you're just that's breaking the, these up I, scenes. That's, that's the goal. If it affects performance too bad, which it shouldn't, because, I mean, we've done big zones and stuff before. Um, but, yes, it is all going to be on one zone. That way, because the idea is that we're going to want to be able to see everything around it, you know, to make it feel like you're actually there. Um, <laughs> rather than having to billboard stuff at the distance. So I don't real time. The reason I ask that is because I don't know where we want to stick this big tree. I don't know if you want that to be in the sheriff's scene or if you want it to be in. I'm so assuming it would be in I the have... sheriff's scene. Because yeah, I have a different map somewhere. What is that little shack right there? Isn't that something where to the left of the sheriff's? Yeah, that right. There. That's an unnamed random building that doesn't need a name. It doesn't need to be entered or anything. It could be like a okay. Well, that storage that could be shit. our watch. That's kind of where I put the watchtower. But we could do something else there too. But we could make that the tree and the sheriff's home, and then the path leading on. Like that could all be, you know, if we had the camera positioned like this, where you're looking like kind of at the sheriff's place, and then the the tree could be to the left. Mm -hmm. we, we could try that all right so otherwise that's... it would need to be otherwise the scene is going to be the other way and it's going to be the sheriff's home and then the the stables and, and the farms and everything like that and then that's that's really too big to do you know one a, a, a fixed camera right because that's good that's a pretty far distance so we need this as a scene for sure um and then this over here I don't know if we make this one scene or two scenes because the stables in and of themselves, I feel like could be a scene all by themselves, just like they were in quest for glory one. When you go into the mm -hmm. castle, you go to the right, there's the stables. I feel like the stables with could be the... a, yeah, there's just the stables. So that's a scene. The Kilkenny, uh, is that the right farm? I can't see the text cause I can't type out. Is that the Kilkenny farm or is this the, I can't, that's I'm the a, other one. I'm gonna the... tab over. That's the McPherson farm. The Kilkenny yeah. farms up here. So this is the the McPherson yep. farm. I don't, you know, this this probably needs to be its own scene. But at the same time, I don't have anything in my mind at the moment quest wise that happens here. So I don't know that we need a scene for here. I do, I knew I do know that we need this, the forest. This. Oh, that'd be that needs would be cool to be a scene. Could... That'd be cool if we could get one with the river and the bridge and everything. If we could get that all, like an like an intermediate scene. Yeah. I don't know. I just like rivers and bridges. It'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. I wonder if we could. I mean, it's possible if we do a wide angle. And then, then if we had combat, there'd be like this troll under the bridge. And... <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know because yeah, we don't. You can do a. You can do a wide angle. It could... just. Um... The health character will be a smaller. Um, Absolutely, it's so kind of hard. We can, we also have the advanced camera, but we said early on that we wanted everything to be a, the fixed camera. Yeah, it needs to be fixed and camera. It, yeah, because that's the style we're going for. Yeah. Um, so the question here is, I we you can know, always turn the camera the other way too. So like we could do, like that forest scene. We could have the camera facing back towards the town, so you see the town and the bridge in the distance. We could do that. Hmm, food for thought. I do know that we need a scene here um, because we've got some stuff that needs to happen here quest-wise. Um, so there's one scene here for the here. We need a scene for the stables. I don't care about these. These are just there as buildings. So you know how it, we can either have the camera facing the stables or we could have it catty cornered to where you see the buildings i'm not too worried about that right now i think just showing the stables themselves is going to be fine just like a parallel shot where you walk in and you just see the length of the stables and you can we'll have some quests to do there uh, i know that we need this so that's one two sorry my cursor's in the wrong place on, on my screen one two three um i know i know <clears throat> excuse me i know that we're going to need the kilkenny farm for sure 
that's four. We'll need the mill, that's five. This is the one I'm not sure about. I don't know about this farm yet or not. Um, probably if we want the bridge shot, we could probably have the building, like you walk in, the farm is right to your right, and then the pathway goes in front of you, and the bridge goes across into the forest. So that's kind of one, cool. two, three, four, five, six. And then, so this is where, uh, this needs to be a scene, seven. That's gonna, Harry yeah, the that's Hermit. going to be all by itself. Yep, Harry the Hermit's a scene. Uh, the Hunter's Lodge is a scene, so that's eight. Yeah. And then I envisioned this being one scene. The the yeah, plaza, yeah, which is nine. That. And then whether or not... So that would give us ten scenes in total, because we already have the one. So one here, two here, three here, four here, five here, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you can do a scene a week, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Just need some special white powder and <laughs> we're good to go. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I don't know I don't know how long it'll take me now that we have the workflow down. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's always going to be hiccups along the way. Uh, but as far as, like, you know, background landscape's already done, you know, as long as we don't have to change any of that. Um. Hmm. I mean, I I could foresee a, a week on 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 the smaller scenes, like like. No, that was a the, joke. I was you know, I was as, just. Well, no, I I mean, like realistically, like the the excuse me, the hermit scene, hunter's lodge, like the farm and the bridge, like those scenes, like even the mill, probably like the smaller. It it's just uh. But the bigger ones, they're going to take a little longer. Well, especially because if you're building this all as one big zone, you know, we're fleshing it out bit by bit. And theoretically, we need to go in order of, like, kind of, you know, we've already got this one built. So the next logical one would be this one with the pathway going over here or going north so that would be the question is like maybe this scene with the mcpherson farm is also this kind of open path so that when you come up so like let's say you, you come over here you see the sheriff's house and everything else and you have two options well actually you have three options but we haven't designed the hey. forest yet hang on your cursor i is keep forgetting. i know what you're talking about i know i keep forgetting <laughs> your cursor Sorry. is in the wrong spot i keep okay, forgetting because yeah. but i know it weird so, you know, when you come over here, um, mm -hmm. you need to have one option to go south, one option yep. to go east, one option to go north from yep. the sheriff's house. Over here, it's just this place. This is going to go out to the exterior, which we haven't designed yet. This is going to come up in here, and I think this is where it needs to be this kind of elongated scene, perhaps. Well, and we might forget building purposes we may put these scenes closer together yes absolutely the game than they actually yes. appear on the map because the point i'm getting at I mean, is that pretty, when yeah. you get here your option needs to be to to go north to mm -hmm. the mill or east mm -hmm. to the bridge or and and then probably when you get up here to the mill you have the option to go east to the farm or west to the plaza or north to Harry the Hermit. You know what I mean? We have to think about entries yep. and exits for each one of these scenes. I don't care about, even though we have a path leading out north, I don't know that we actually need them to go north. Um, go for, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, we could just have that be, you know, if, you, if they click it, it could just say, you can't go there right now. You know, something of that nature. Um, same thing here to the the west. Um, the only place that I envision them going out is going to be to the south, past the main entrance, by the sheriff's house, because that'll take them into the forest. We'll have a few forest scenes as well as the beach scene. Oh, and for those of you who are wondering, on the world map, this is going to be on the western coast, 
uh, near Forkland. Um, we haven't decided exactly where it's going to be. It doesn't really need to have a specific location yet. Um, we'll figure that out later on. Um, till, we, till we need it to for lore purposes. Yes. <laughs> so for the moment, it's just kind of a standalone generic village somewhere in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> Sleepy little town in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And I don't, we don't have to do interiors right now, but I was thinking as far as interiors go, I know we want the hermit's hut because the hermit's going to be inside his hut. Um, okay. So it'll be like the bookstore where you go in and he's going to have bits and pieces of alchemist stuff and all sorts of fun things. Um, the Hunter's Lodge, I don't know yet. I just threw that in there, and I figured that would be a fun place that we might send them for a side quest. Um, like, if they need to find something for, like, the the guy who's on the beach and he needs parts for his boat, you know, we might, we might have something that could be found at the Hunter's cabin here. So that probably doesn't need an interior, so to speak. Um, I'm torn on the Sheriff's House because I don't know that we actually need an interior. Um... I think we'll be fine with an exterior here. The stables are open, so I would imagine that's going to be an outdoor scene that doesn't need any interiors because you'll be able to walk around in it and see everything. Um, the mill. See, this will be just stuff when we're going through writing we'll have to figure out as we're figuring out the rest of the quest line. Um where do we want to send them? Um, because in my we know mind, they got to go inside. The, we know they got to go inside the hall. Yeah, the adventures hall has to have an interior. Yeah, um, for sure. This definitely needs an interior. This definitely needs an interior. Um, we already the have these. These four already have interiors. Well, the three of them do. Oh, that's true. We didn't Black's have it. We 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 have an optional interior for the forge if we ever need it. Um, so that would give us 10 outdoor scenes, one, two, three, three interiors, four interiors, five interiors. That might be all we need, to be honest with you. Um, that would give us 15 scenes. And then if we have like five, maybe, maybe six, because if the Hunter's Lodge, um, had an interior maybe well that would be a maybe um that well, would be a maybe because we would need some special assets for that one probably like yeah i don't know that we have anything that would work for that right now so i mean for the general parts of it yes but like trophies and stuff like that no here's a good 15 scenes there um then we need about five scenes i wouldn't imagine that we need more more than five scenes for the forest to the south might even need less than that it might be like king's quest six where you get off the beach you go you're at the crossroads so you have the big tree crossroads you go to the castle or you go to the town um we might have something where we have you know the exterior scene of the village and then maybe one intermediary scene and then the beach you know i don't know how we haven't decided yet what we need to do in the forest and if we need more than two or three scenes for that. Um, what we haven't done yet is the island and the dungeon. Um, that's going to be... Endgame content. Maybe. Yeah, that'll, take a while. that might take a bit. But that might also be... Because I imagine you get there, there's going to be the beach when you get there, then there's going to be a ruins, and then I think at the end of the ruins, like one scene, you go into the ruins and then that's going to be the entrance to the dungeon. Then you're going to down to the dungeon and we'll probably have three to five scenes in the dungeon that require puzzle solving to get through. It doesn't have to be massive. You know, three to five scenes is quite sufficient. So 15, let's say 20, 25 scenes will probably be conservatively 25 to 30 scenes, I think would be able to do this. But for now, we're getting beyond the scope of Marin's rest right now, so um, it's anyway, hard not to. Anyway, that's that's a wrap on that. I think. Um, I think that looks good. I think that that is a good way to do it. Um, 
and and obviously the way that it's designed it could always be expanded upon any number that we needed to if we needed i mean we could put an interior on any of these buildings that we needed to like that's the nice thing about get, yeah the, say we, we say we get to the beach and he's we decide that the quest line needs he needs to go back to the the one farm you know and go inside and get who knows what you know or like you said the hunter's lodge or whatever yeah i mean But I think I think that's a good starting point. So that lets you go forth and start building the sheriff's section. Buildings. Yeah, the sh well, you know, putting all the stuff there for the sheriff's section of the zone. Um, yep. Big then... tree, a hut, and a, and a sheriff's house. Yeah, because all so the other trees. House? Are... This, isn't the ja this isn't the jail. This is the sheriff's um, house. It's it's everything. He lives there, works there. That's why I looked at it like. It, it's so it is just like okay you know he probably has a room on the second floor and the main floor is you know four or so five jails cells downstairs yeah upstairs is living quarters yeah okay four or five cells downstairs i mean there, there's it's not much is ever going to go on in a little town like this so he you know might not even have more than his cells might just be like a, old, a closet old ben milton goes there. yeah old ben milton goes there a lot Right, drunk tank. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, that's going to be it for this. Hopefully, because I couldn't record it because I didn't have my OBS settings properly set up. Hopefully, I remember to trigger this. Hopefully, I triggered the setting on uh, on our new Twitch channel to actually save this as a broadcast so that I can port it over to YouTube. Otherwise, I guess you have to tune in next week <laughs> to catch these. Um, but for that, on that note, um, if you're going to be tuning in live to the things we're doing, um, the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing live read throughs on Monday nights at 8 p.m. Central. I'm, I'm going to be doing chapter two and chapter three. I just read chapter one the other night and moving forward. We are now going to be doing these Wednesday nights meetings every Wednesday night, somewhere between 830 and 9 p.m. Depends on when he gets home. Um, and we can do these. We'll be live streaming them here, and then we will be pushing them to YouTube probably on Fridays, um, unless I come up with a different schedule. And of course, don't forget, this is going to be where we are streaming the D&D &D sessions that we're kicking off uh, on November 21st. But we are uh, unofficially meeting for the first time this Sunday, November 7th. We are going to record some snippets from that and have that up on YouTube for a final video as we prep for the D&D &D stuff. We're also going to be doing... Excuse me. I did not take a nap today. Um, <laughs> we're also going to be doing... Uh, I'm going to be doing some... Uh, Chris and I will both be doing painting videos for the miniatures. I'm sure Joey, Joey will do some of those at some point. And he also has plans for a... Um, world. He's going to be doing all of the world building and doing videos on that. I don't know if you're going to be streaming. I think we kind of talked about the other day because... Your internet Probably. is okay, but not necessarily okay for streaming all the time. So, yeah. Um, so I'll probably I'll probably try to record, and I don't know. I think we yeah, talked not... about that. I think we said you'll record it maybe like once a week, or once every two weeks. You'll do a live stream of the things you've done and explain all of those things in the live stream. And then if you want the breakdown of how those were done. We're going to have yeah. a YouTube development I'm series up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to keep the developer series, whatever, to short videos because of internet limica limitations. And also, it does, I mean, it's world building, guys, and, and, and game developing. It gets boring sitting there. While, I enjoy watching people de develop, but watching a two hour session of somebody just like fine tuning a brick that they're placing. Trying to get this two is, pieces of. of, yeah. of uh, planking to snap together and they're not wanting to snap exactly. properly and you're going through yes. all the settings going what the fuck is going on here why are exactly. these things not fitting why is the lighting so. not working on this thing what, what did i do what did i what did i touch <laughs> what button did i press yeah. yes exactly so uh try to keep uh try to keep those to short uh but i want them to be informational um because there's not a, the, the pack that we're using there's not a lot of uh, YouTube videos about it and it is uh, I think an amazing tool that should be used by all who are interested in it and he's not charging enough for it in my mind um, no uh, it's a pretty amazing tool and we've got it's it's called the I think it's like adventure 
game called the point and click adventure toolkit yeah it's a great thing and we put it up for those of you following along on our patreon we do an expense report every couple of months for our patrons and we show them what we've purchased for the game from the unreal store and all that good stuff um and we put that up there it was like i think this was the first thing we purchased on the unreal store uh, it is because you know, we were talking about building a point and click game and then literally we went to I think you did. I think you went to the Unreal store like we were brainstorming. You were like point and click, and that was the first thing that came up. And we were like, "This is perfect." And so far, it has been perfect. There have been some quirks to it, which we've had to work. You know, there's we've had to have some workarounds. Um, it's not a perfect system, but it is a very robust system, and we have done our own tweaks to it to make things work the way we we sort of need them to. Um, you know, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. And yeah, so he's going to be doing videos on those. So you'll want to tune in for all that stuff. Anyway, um, thanks for following along. If you're watching here on Twitch, don't forget to subscribe to the Twitch channel. I guess it's not subscribe, it's follow because we don't have affiliate status yet to subscribe. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you get all the future updates that we do here on the YouTube channel. And if you would like to support us, which would be amazing, Head over to the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash wandering hermits. Links are all down below. Come join us in Discord. Hang out with us there as well. We will see everybody in the next episode.